Rule number five, officials and their responsibilities and positions. The match is administered by a first referee and a second referee. The assistant officials include a scorer, libro tracker, timer, and line judges. All of these officials will be procured by the host school. The authority of the first and second referees starts when they arrive on the floor and jurisdiction extends through the second referee's verification of the final score of the match. They do have some clerical authority over the contest through the completion of any reports. Official volleyball signals as shown on pages 64 and 65 and described on pages 66 and 67 of the rules book shall be used. Should there be a discrepancy between the hand signals and mechanics in the rules book and our EOA mechanics manual, the EOA mechanics manual will be the governing document. A very important part of the first and second referee's responsibility when they arrive at the site is to identify the host management. Also, they will need to know from the host management if there are any special events planned and where that person will be in case there are any special situations or incidents that are beyond the control of the R1. During the pre-match conference, the first referee should in introduce all the members of the officiating crew. The pre-match conference should be brief, but be sure to include any specific ground rules for the facility, the legality of the players' uniforms and equipment, and sportsmanship. A sample pre-match conference can be found in the EOA Mechanics Manual. Visiting team will call the coin toss before the match, and should there be a deciding set, the home team will call the coin toss at the table with the R2. The R1 should have a very thorough pre-brief with the R2 and the line judges, even if this crew has worked together before. In the middle of a tight match is not the time to find out that there is something that you did not discuss and have to delay the match to get it straight. Likewise, the R2 should brief the table, the score, libro, tracker, and timer. It is preferable to have the score in the middle between the Libro tracker and the timer. There are also examples of briefings for the table crew in the EOA mechanics manual. It is important for the R2 to establish good rapport with the table crew and ensure they realize that they are part of the entire officiating team and report to the R2. The first referee as the head official will have general supervision of all the officials, make decisions on matters that may not be specifically covered by the rules, and make the final decision where there is any disagreement between officials. This goes back to making sure that he has a good pre-briefing with the R2 as well as the line judges. This includes replacing any member of the officiating crew who is not properly performing their duties. Prior to the match, the first referee should have checked the referee stand to ensure that he has a good view of the entire court. After the timed warm-up and pre-match ceremonies, the officials will take their places and the R1 will direct the players to their respective end lines. He then whistles and brings all the players onto the court and the second referee checks the lineups for each team. The second referee will indicate the captain for each team, throw out the ball, and indicate that he or she is ready. Before blowing his or her whistle and beckoning for the first serve, the referee should make one last check, scanning the court, players, the officiating team, and the benches, and back to the server to make sure that the server has the ball. The R1's basic responsibilities during play are to whistle for each serve and dead ball, to give a visible signal for each loss of rally, point, serve, 
violation, penalty, a replay or reserve, end of set, and change of courts as shown and described in the Volleyball Rules Manual as well as in the National Federation of High Schools casebook. During play, the first and second referees should be mindful that only the head coach and floor captain may speak with the officials. The nature of those requests will be discussed further in Rule 6. The R2 should whistle and signal for net faults on both sides of the net, out of bounds and antenna on his or her side of the net, hand foot faults at the center line, and out of alignment on the receiving team. The second referee will mirror the first referee's signal for each loss of rally, uh, point, violation, replay or reserve, and end of set. The R2 should check the score sheet for accuracy during each timeout and at the end of each set prior to initialing. Critical for the R2 to make con eye contact with the R1 prior to the R1 beckoning for serve and at the end of each play. As mentioned before, it is critical for the R2 to have a thorough pre-match briefing with the score and libero tracker. This should include notification of score discrepancy, serving order, number of timeouts each team has taken, number of substitutions when there is improper server or an illegal substitution. The tracker should notify the R2 when there's a discrepancy with any replacement and let the R2 know if the Libro has not remained out of the set for one rally, as well as informing the R2 at the beginning of each timeout if the Libro is in or out for each team. The timer should be instructed when to start the clock between sets and when to use the horn. There is a line judge mechanics and procedures section in the EOA mechanics manual, which has detailed information on pre-match protocols and duties, as well as match duties and procedures. I cannot overemphasize that communication at all levels and at all times is vital for the crew to succeed. Rule six, the team, composition and positions. Team members consist of all school representatives located in the team bench area, coaches, players, managers, and certified athletic trainers. All players on the same team in uniform are teammates. The team needs six players to begin the first set of the match. If a team has fewer than six players, the match shall be forfeited. However, if the team has fewer than six players due to illness, injury, or disqualification after the start of the match, it shall continue play. In this case, when the vacant position rotates to right back to serve, a loss of rally or point will be awarded to the opponent. Each team will designate a playing captain, and that will be the only player who may communicate with the referees. If this player is replaced by a substitute, the coach will designate a player's captain who should remain as such until substituted for or until the original playing captain returns to the set. The captain may request a timeout, verification of timeouts used, verification of serving order, verification of proper server for opponent, and if a signal is missed, ask the first referee to repeat the call. The position of players in order of serve are right back, right front, center front, left front, left back, and center back. The Libro is a defensive specialist who is only a back row player. Libro actions are discussed in Rule 9. At the moment of serve, all players except the server shall be within the team's playing court and may be in contact with the boundary lines or center line, but they may not have any part of the body touching the floor outside of those lines. The case book on pages 23 through 25 provides an excellent explanation as well as a number of diagrams concerning legal and illegal alignment. Once the ball has been served, players may move anywhere on the court. 
Penalty for illegal alignment is loss of rally and point to opponent. Quick note on screening. The serving team cannot take any action to prevent the receiving team from seeing the contact of the serve or the flight of the served ball. It may look like there is a potential screen, but based on the flight of the ball, it is not. Good to be aware of a potential screen, but make sure that you warn before you penalize.